We meet at a challenging time for the world order. This session's theme, a watershed moment, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges, seeks to capture its seriousness. Having borne the brunt of cross-border terrorism for decades, India firmly advocates a zero-tolerance approach. In our view, there is no justification for any act of terrorism regardless of motivation, and no rhetoric, however sanctimonious, can ever cover up bloodstains. Excellencies, the year 2022 is an important milestone in India's journey towards growth, development, and prosperity. India is celebrating 75 years of its independence, what we call Azadi Ka Amrit Mahatsav. The story of that period has been one of toil, of determination, innovation, an enterprise of millions of ordinary Indians. They are rejuvenating a society pillaged by centuries of foreign attacks and colonialism. And they are doing so in a democratic framework whose steady progress is reflected in more authentic voices and grounded leadership. This new India, under the visionary and dynamic leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi is a confident and resurgent society. Its agenda for our centenary will be achieved through the five pledges that we committed to on our Independence Day. One, we are resolved to make India a developed country in the next 25 years. For the world, that creates more capacities for global good. Two, we will liberate ourselves from a colonial mindset. Externally, this means reformed multilateralism and more contemporary global governance. Three, our rich civilizational heritage will be a source of pride and of strength. This includes care and concern for the environment so ingrained in our traditional ethos. Four, we will promote greater unity and solidarity. This expresses a coming together on global issues such as terrorism, pandemics, or the environment. And five, we will instill consciousness and of duties and responsibilities. This applies to nations as much as it does to citizens. Madam President, even while India contributes to global betterment, we recognize the sharp deterioration in the international landscape. The world is already struggling with challenges of post-pandemic economic recovery. The debt situation of the developing is precarious. To this is now added the rising costs and the shrinking availability of fuel, of food, and of fertilizers. These, along with trade disruptions and diversions, are among the many consequences of the Ukraine conflict. The Indo-Pacific, too, witnesses fresh concerns about its stability and its security. And climate events have added an overlay on these mounting anxieties. As we saw in the case of the COVID pandemic, the South will be the most impacted, even if the immediate causes are well beyond. It is imperative that global conversations recognize this deep unfairness. The inequity of vaccine distribution 
should not be replicated in other domains. Madam President, as the Ukraine conflict continues to rage, we are often asked, whose side are we on? And our answer each time is straight and honest. India is on the side of peace and will remain firmly there. We are on the side that respects the UN Charter and its founding principles. We are on the side that calls for dialogue and diplomacy as the only way out. We are on the side of those struggling to make ends meet, even as they stare at the escalating costs of food, of fuel, and fertilizers. It is therefore in our collective interest to work constructively, both within the United Nations and outside, in finding an early resolution to this conflict. While the global attention has been on Ukraine, India has also had to contend with other challenges, especially in its own neighborhood. Some of them may be aggravated by the COVID pandemic and ongoing conflicts, but they speak too of a deeper malaise. The accumulation of debt in fragile economies is of particular concern. We believe that in such times, the international community must rise above narrow national agendas. India, for its part, is taking exceptional measures in exceptional times. Having borne the brunt of cross-border terrorism for decades, India firmly advocates a zero-tolerance approach. In our view, there is no justification for any act of terrorism regardless of motivation, and no rhetoric however sanctimonious, can ever cover up bloodstains. The United Nations responds to terrorism by sanctioning its perpetrators. Those who politicize the UNSC 1267 sanctions regime, sometimes even to the extent of defending proclaimed terrorists, they do so at their own peril. Believe me, they advance neither their own interests nor indeed the reputation. The call for reformed multilateralism, with reforms of the Security Council at its core, enjoys considerable support among UN members. It does so because of the widespread recognition that the current architecture is anachronistic and ineffective. It is also perceived as deeply unfair, denying entire continents and regions a voice in a forum that deliberates their future. India is prepared to take up greater responsibilities, but it seeks at the same time to ensure that the injustice faced by the global south is decisively addressed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.